Hey folks, a beautiful good afternoon to you from uh, you know Panuka Farms. This is yours truly, uh, Mr. Panuka here at uh, Panuka Farms. And uh, just in case this is your first time, uh, you know, coming across uh, Panuka Farm YouTube channel, uh, we are based here uh, in uh, Zambia, just outside the outskirts of uh, the capital of Zambia, uh, Lusaka. So as a farm, we are specialized in uh, uh, egg, you know, production. We also do horticulture farming. Um, you know, English cucumbers, sweet peppers, red, yellow, and green. We also do zucchini squash, um, you know, sweet corn, um, and, and quite a few other uh, crops. Yeah, of course, like um, uh, iceberg lettuce. Yeah. So today, I uh, just wanted to give you uh, a quick update on uh, our sweet pepper uh, production. Uh, it's been a quite turbulent. Um, we kind of, uh, you know, relaxed at some point in terms of just uh, disease management. Uh, on uh, some of the greenhouses that I'll actually show you. Uh, so um, let's just uh, get into the field so that I actually show you what's been going on uh, with our sweet pepper production, some of the key lessons that we so far picked uh, in our sweet pepper uh, production. So tag along, uh, let's get deep into uh, in our sweet pepper uh, production here at uh, Panuka Farm. So in this greenhouse, uh, which is GH5 here at Panuka Farm, uh, we have... Uh, a variety called red jet uh we transplanted this on the 22nd of uh, january 2021 and uh, so far this is how the crop you know uh, looks like you know kind of dwarfish uh compared to i think the other red jet that uh, uh we have in the other greenhouses um but uh, uh in terms of productivity i think it's doing quite well um despite this uh, dwarfish you know appearance so these are some of the peppers that are just uh getting ready we have actually been harvesting from here um somehow we were trying uh the tracing clips uh in this uh you know greenhouse um mixed you know results i think we've seen uh a much better you know outlook of these uh tracing clips in uh, uh english cucumber than in sweet pepper because with sweet pepper we actually maintain three stem system so that means use of a lot of uh, these, uh, you know, tracing clips, um, which means you actually consume too many of them. So I think in the interim, we'll actually revert to our old uh, system of just winding, you know, the pepper around uh, these tracing twines and uh, perhaps for now, uh, dedicate the tracing, you know, clips, uh, you know, for English cucumber. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this is quite a very tricky crop, but um, we are trying to stabilize uh, our production. Uh, it's quite a lot of uh, uh, learning. And uh, one of the critical issues that we've actually picked up so far is that um, we probably actually need a dedicated staff for each crop, given the complexity of these crops in terms of just irrigation, uh, nutritional management, uh, disease surveillance, and, and the like. So you actually need someone who's fully employed to just do some of these, uh, you know, high value uh, crops. Because if you have a management team that has divided attention across different crops, they've got to look at, uh, you know, iceberg lettuce. They look at uh, sweet peppers and then they have to look at English cucumber. Uh, yeah, that's quite a lot. Um, it may look, you know, easy, but these crops can actually be quite complex. Uh, so... That's one of the biggest lessons. Make sure that for some of these high value crops, uh, have a dedicated team uh, for each crop, you know, for um, very good results. And that's something that we're actually moving into. Uh, we're actually just in the process of, uh, you know, constructing uh, new staffing uh, dwellings uh, so that uh, uh, we can have dedicated staff for each of the crops uh, so that uh, we actually see uh, the productivity uh, on the farm. So that's just uh, a 360, you know, review of uh, this, you know, uh, greenhouse. Apparently, one thing that we've actually observed is that uh, where the sun, you know, uh, you know, comes up from the east, uh, most of the crops in our greenhouses are actually taller uh, and look more productive. So you actually see that uh, on this side, most of these crops look more 
vegetative look even better and the productivity uh, is actually very good um, so this is on the eastern side so we have actually observed in almost all the greenhouses crops on the eastern side where you know the sun uh, comes up uh, actually much better so our own conclusion is that I think the morning sun is extremely very good um, you know for for uh, crops um, and then if you see on the western side where the sun sets uh, most of the crops are actually kind of dwarfish um, you know compared to their counterparts on the eastern side so without any doubt this is something that we've actually observed here at Panuka farm it's actually a phenomenon that you actually see in almost all our greenhouses so yeah we may not be baptized agricultural <laughs> You know, experts, um, but based on practice, this is something that we've actually concluded because we can actually see uh, in all our greenhouses about this um, uh, phenomenon. All right, so yeah, take note of that. Uh, you may actually see some magic for you uh, just in the way you do the, uh, you know, uh, orientation uh, of the crops. Uh, you may actually have, uh, you know, different uh, results. Now in this greenhouse, which is GH4 here at Panuka Farm, uh, we have a sweet pepper crop, uh, which is much older, uh, but here there's quite a lot of lessons that we can actually pick up in terms of disease management. Uh, we somewhat blinked uh, in this crop, and uh, you actually see also the other sister crop in the other greenhouse, GH1. Uh, you actually see that um, we have uh, quite an onslaught of uh, you know potassium you know deficiency uh there's also an element of magnesium uh deficiency um how do we know that we actually do some diagnosis uh, using some of the uh you know online you know tools and also here in the greenhouse i think you've actually seen uh our disease or nutritional you know deficiency chart uh which actually lists a number of uh, you know elements and so what we're talking about, if you actually look at the leaves that we just showed you, uh, you actually see that they look like that. So that's uh, a potassium uh, deficiency. And also you see a combination of, uh, you know, magnesium uh, deficiency manifesting itself um, in different uh, forms. So this uh, nutritional, uh, uh, you know, deficiency chart uh, is quite handy. Uh, but this one, we must admit, you know, our team uh you know blinked and uh we actually see um you know a very good example of how not to do things and uh this is uh one of the lessons that we've picked up like we indicated uh that we need dedicated staff for each crop so that issues of uh you know disease or nutritional uh, deficiency um you know are actually picked up very early um as the agronomists say uh sweet pepper is one of the unforgiving crops if you miss it uh the likelihood that you actually rectify the problem is is, is quite uh you know opaque so again one other thing that we mentioned is that uh one of the things we've observed in most of the greenhouses is that uh, all the lines on the eastern side have a far much taller you know crop compared to the ones on the um you know uh, south or western side it could be a shedding issue uh but one other issue that we've actually picked up is that um uh almost all the crops again on the eastern side uh are much you know taller so yeah those are some of the lessons that we're picking up uh based on reality and not uh, some test tube stuff um so don't crucify us. Um, we're just uh, giving you some tidbits based on our observation and uh, not based on some agricultural, you know, uh, books. Okay, so this is certainly not how to do things. Uh, unfortunately, this crop, um, by the time I think we woke up, <laughs> uh, the damage had been done. So it's just a matter of time. Uh, we'll certainly be uh, decommissioning this. So let's get to the other greenhouse uh, so that you also see uh, what's happening. So now we're in uh, greenhouse number one. We also have uh, you know, a sweet pepper crop here that was uh, transplanted uh, in November uh, last year. And um, again, here we had um, 
quite some deficiencies that uh, we delayed, you know, to to fix. Um, so we've done the diagnosis. Um, you know, potassium is is a big one, uh, and also a combination with magnesium deficiency. Those are actually quite some of the killer, you know, uh, deficiencies on uh, sweet pepper that we've observed here at Panuka Farm. Um, so yeah, you have to learn as you proceed. Um, again, like we indicated, one of the solutions is that uh, some of these crops you actually need dedicated, you know, uh, staff uh, to manage these crops 24/7, uh, so that uh, you have timely detection of these, uh, you know, deficiencies. So even us at Panuka Farm, we have some issues sometimes. It's not always very, you know, rosy. Uh, yeah, but that's the name of the game uh, in farming. Like we've indicated, the issue is that you need to pick the lessons. Uh, so for us, uh, we've actually picked up quite some very serious, you know, lessons. There's a combination of powder mute here, potassium and magnesium deficiency. Uh, also some element of nitrogen. Um, what we actually did is that... Um, uh, we tried to actually beef up the nitrogen, and you actually see that there's quite some very good, uh, you know, vegetation that has actually, uh, you know, picked up. Uh, so that, I think, it's something that we've resolved. But again, I think the damage on this crop has been done. Um, so unlike, you know, the other varieties uh, that we actually showed you that lasted, you know, like for a year, uh, with this one, it appears we're not very lucky uh perhaps partially we mismanaged this crop ourselves uh but we're still trying to check whether uh there's also you know some issues with the variety uh because what we have here is rigid um you know the management practice have not really you know deviated that much uh when we uh planted tuke but somehow we've seen a huge variance in the response uh, of this variety to you know our management practices um, it, it probably is a crybaby of a, uh, a variety that requires quite a lot of pampering. Um, so it's something that we're yet to, um, you know, uh, deduce. Uh, so we wouldn't really, you know, outrightly blame the variety, but, uh, it's something that we actually quite, uh, keenly, you know, looking at, um, so that we really see, um, you know, which variety really can uh, conform to our management practices, of course, with room for us to improve, uh, but also with a very good, you know, uh, defense, you know, mechanism in terms of disease, uh, you know, package. So, yeah, so this is um, the greenhouse um, and uh, quite some very good lessons that we've actually picked up here. Uh, you know, some kind of wavy growth. You actually see that uh, here, uh, this crop is actually quite tall. Uh, but uh, if if you check, you know, just there, uh, you know, quite some very, you know, short, you know, crop on the other side again, uh, they're tall. So you you actually see that, um, yeah, we we have a few issues that we need to, you know, fix uh, in terms of nutritional management. Um, this is certainly not how we'd want to do uh, sweet pepper production. But already, uh, this is something that we're already fixing. Uh, we believe in rectifying our own mistakes. Um, so remember, lessons learned must be, you know, uh, documented and, um, you know, fixed in the subsequent, uh, you know, crops. And that's exactly what we're doing in the other, uh, you know, crop that is young. Okay, folks. Yeah, so that's uh, from uh, this uh, greenhouse.